All right, good morning. Uh, wow, that's tough to top, uh, Jack. Uh, um, uh, so like Jack said, my name's Shahid Azim. I'm founder of uh, this venture-backed startup uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts uh, called Qantas. Uh, we started about two years ago with this notion of fundamentally um, redefining how we view our personal health. And uh, let me begin by perhaps asking a, a simple question here. How many people in the room have been either personally affected or have had a loved one affected by uh, cardiovascular disease? Uh, perhaps show of hands. Um, so it's, it's more than half the room. Uh, that's not surprising. What is surprising is that most of us find out um, when, um, uh, most of us actually find out and become heart aware only after some kind of a critical event. Um, like uh, uh, one of the speakers earlier this morning, I too had a, a sort of a family story, lost my father fairly early in his 50s as a result of a sudden heart attack. And I wasn't there, but I'm told that days leading up to that event, he was certainly feeling uneasy. His body was essentially trying to tell him something. But we simply haven't had the tools to understand these signals. So this is an all too uh, sort of a common storyline and one we aspire to change. So nearly, um, you know, nothing kills more people on the planet um, than cardiovascular disease. A third of all deaths on the planet can be attributed to our heart. And if you really look at the risks and reasons behind it, uh, according to Mayo, uh, the number one risk factor really is uh, hypertension. And the number one reason uh, for cardiovascular disease is the arterial stiffness and the buildup of plaque in our arteries. And so over the last many years, we really haven't had the tools to not only track and monitor some of these changes in our physiology, um, let alone uh, be proactive about that. So hypertension itself uh, affects a staggering over a billion people on the planet. And most of this is left uncontrolled, leading to stroke and MI. And unfortunately, this should not be the first time you listen to your heart. Um, we're trying to build technologies essentially that help us tap into these core signals. So you move from a reactive uh, paradigm of healthcare to more of a predictive model. Um, and ironically, some of the best data that we collect today is during uh, emergencies and post-emergencies, uh, post, uh, uh, post right? And that is absolutely shocking in our minds. It's a paradigm that we are deeply passionate in changing. Um, and if you really look at the history of innovation around blood pressure and hypertension, the last real innovation really happened over 100 years ago where, um, where we actually added a blood pressure cuff, uh, not too similar to what most of you have in your homes, and, um, and subsequently discovery of systolic and diastolic uh, blood pressure. Um, we've not much has changed around that, you know. Uh, you go to your GP, you go to your physician, that experience is very, very similar. And um, that's awkward to us, because if you look at how we're used to uh, just the rapid innovation and cycles in consumer electronics, and that's fundamentally moving and creating experiences that we so, uh, we're so passionate about. Um, and we haven't really seen that in the medical personal technology space. And so my, myself and my co-founders about two and a half years ago got together to really change the status quo. Uh, the landscape back in 2012 was uh, there was some fundamental realignment in U.S. healthcare. You know, uh, about 17% of GDP is tied up to the healthcare itself. And it was really moving from um, fee-for-service to essentially outcomes-based model, where now payers and providers are looking at uh, preventive care for that matter. And so with that sort of macroeconomic uh, uh, background, we were fundamentally uh, looking at 
almost a tipping point around a bunch of different things, and I think this was highlighted by another speaker this morning, where sensors are becoming a lot more smarter, smaller. Um, we all carry a, a, a mini computer in our pockets now, and there's, there's access to computing power at such a cheap uh, and highly distributed sort of manner really provides uh, uh, an opportunity that was extremely ripe. And so, Professor Charlie Sudini um, at MIT runs a lab that was set up a few years ago, really looking at how microelectronics transformed different industries and could they do that for medical devices. And so David He, my co-founder, was really looking at, um, looking at new ways of capturing vital signs, in particular um, looking at blood pressure. And, uh, his work really led to um, some of the core IP that we've now commercializing is essentially being able to capture your blood pressure without a cuff on a single point on your body um, and being able to do it in a, in a very high resolution. So we go from uh, what I showed you earlier to this. It's a very, very small form factor. The core technology basically is a combination of optical and motion sensing. We're looking at a known methodology around pulse transit time, but we're solving it in a way that creates a consumer experience where you don't need a cuff, where it's just based on contact. We're able to uh, essentially capture blood pressure, respiration rates, and a few other cardiac-specific metrics. But the real innovation really is, is not so much what we measure, but how we measure it. That helps us deliver a consumer experience um, that's going to be fairly unique. So we, were, we thought we had something interesting a couple of years ago, um, but there was a lot of validation work that needed to happen. And we've been uh, largely in stealth mode, and this is uh, uh, thanks to Jack. This is really sort of our first time out where we're actually talking about some of the data that we're capturing and some of the things and the insights that we're learning. And one of the... Uh, the core desire for the founding um, partners was really to not just build a medical device company, but to build a platform that could touch a lot of lives. And that's fundamentally made us choose, uh, uh, make different choices, really. Um, and so during the process, we essentially led us to a big idea around um, the first principles of human health. Last year, Anne gave a wonderful talk around how genome is the foundation of your health. We think that that's absolutely true. And not only that, but it's also uh, uh, democratizing of this data that's going to open up a fundamentally new understanding of how we manage our own health. And so in our world, um, it's the combination of not just your genotype data, but it's also the phenotype is the other piece of the puzzle. And uh, Together, they come together to basically provide you the building blocks for doing uh, personalized precision medicine. And so the underlying thesis for uh, the company was really revolving around, um, you know, we looked at the human body as essentially as an intelligent system. It's giving off signals as a consequence of our actions and this feedback in, term, in, in the form of these signals have we've ne never really had the capacity to capture these meaningful signals in ways that um, that's relevant and it's contextual. And so um, we've spent the last couple of years really refining this technology and, uh, and our core thesis that you know, these electrical, mechanical, optical signals essentially um, are extremely rich um, uh, information. They um, it basically provides us the building block of doing something pretty high impact. And so for us, our initial focus really is around cardiovascular. And uh, when we thought about commercializing this technology, we looked at three primary sort of um, aspects of the platform. Um, the first piece that we wanted to do was really build something that was continuous and passive. So the notion that once the user puts on a device or a wearable, that's all they have to do. And the device is actually capturing this very, very high resolution data. The second piece was it had to be clinically meaningful. 
Because at the end of the day, um, you know, we've all seen the first generation of devices. Um, they, they've done a reasonably good job. Uh, but I think for, um, for this next phase of devices, you really need to have clinical, uh, clinically meaningful um, data points. And the third piece of the platform for us is really uh, not just picking up the signals and tracking this clinically meaningful information, but then also converting it into uh, actionable insights. As a, and so it was absolutely important to build that capacity in-house as part of the platform. So what we have today, um, we've built a few hundred of our devices. These are risk-based devices, essentially capturing a lot of data at a very, very high resolution. And that's probably more uh, data for practically any use case that's out there uh, that we can imagine. And I think uh, the way we look at this is when you make um, vital sign uh, biosensing as comfortable as something that you would wear every day, then um, the context that you capture while you're, um, while you're looking at all these signals begins to tell an interesting story. And so what we've discovered over the, over the last uh, uh, two years is uh, we're actually capturing some new and, and very, very interesting data. And this new data essentially has the potential uh, to create insights not just for users, but also for physicians and practitioners. And I'll give you a little example. We ran this study last, uh, well, it's been over a year now, at Mass General Hospital in, uh, in Boston. And the goal of this study was really looking at uh, users wearing our device in an ambulatory uh, blood pressure cuff over a 20-hour period. And uh, I believe the red dots are us. Uh, no, the blue is us and uh, the red is ambulatory blood pressure. And you can see the data is tracking reasonably well. But what we also discovered is that over the last few years, there have been many landmark studies um, that have shown nocturnal dip in your blood pressure to be the single biggest predictor of mortality with cardiovascular disease. Um, and so there's really no technology out there that can capture this data today in a seamless fashion. And I'll give you an example of uh, this is person on the left is somebody with a very healthy nocturnal dip. Uh, the one on the right has, uh, is hypertensive as well as showing a fairly flat line. And so this is the kind of data that we've begun to see over the last few months as we have more and more of our devices uh, on wrists. Another thing that I spoke about was this notion of um, you know, arterial stiffness and vascular health. So we're not only, um, we're not only going after um, your cardio, but it's also the vascular health, which is, uh, which is extremely important. So this notion that your arterial stiffness essentially changes over time with age, plaque buildup, there's a whole bunch of different reasons. And what if you could actually track that? What if you could track that against your behavior, your lifestyle choices, and actually begin to contextualize the data and provide this as feedback for your users. And so this notion that you could, your biological age could be something, and your actual arterial health and vascular health could be five years less or five years more, is something that we're already seeing uh, in, in the labs. And so you know, the way we've thought about this is, I think Eric Topol, <laughs> Uh, referred to this as uh, sort of our Gutenberg moment, essentially democratizing of this information in ways that will, what we believe, uh, fundamentally transform how we even look at disease states. Um, one of the hypotheses that we've had is perhaps hypertension needs to be redefined as a disease, not just one, uh, but there are many, many different forms of hypertension here. We've just simply not had the data to quantify it. And so, um, it just sort of last few comments. I think when we started, we realized that the technology certainly had the potential for a big impact. Um, we're looking to revolutionize cardiovascular care and move the paradigm really from not just 
preventive, reactive, not just reactive care, but really look at it from a preventive care model. Um, and then take the same uh, signals and apply it for other use cases. So um, that's, uh, uh, that's the Qantas story. Uh, we're uh, deeply passionate about what we do. We think there's an opportunity to do something with a high impact, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, sharing more later in the year. Thank you. Um, Shahid. Oh. Yeah. When, when can I sign up? <laughs> um, so there is, we have a sign up at our website for a heart study that's going on now. Uh, and unfortunately, that's only local in Boston for now, but we'll certainly be looking at releasing some number of units by end of the year. And are you looking to license the technology or to be the manufacturer of the wearable? So that's an interesting question. We've had this uh, dilemma a little bit because, um, you know, a few years ago when we did start, we, there was a need to do our own hardware to sort of not only control our destiny and the consumer experience, but also nobody really was doing what we were, what we, what was required. And so I think we certainly have our own device that we will be pushing out in the market later this year. But the technology is really um, suited to be, it's a highly scalable solution. So we could totally see ourselves being in other people's hardware as well and really <laughs> enabling this and, and really scaling up the data, which is kind of what our core interest is. There's a man here I can introduce you to who invented the, well, designed the Fitbit, so yeah. maybe that would be useful. Um, and so, <clears throat> collecting the data is one mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. I can give the network 400,000 data points a day. How do you then move to the next step at scale yeah. of telling me how to change my behavior? Yeah, so I think for that, the first step is really getting enough data uh, to begin with. Yep. Um, and, um, and the other piece is, I think a lot of it is, um, so one of the questions that I get asked a lot is, are, we, are you a consumer device or a medical device? Are you selling it into the healthcare channel or directly to the consumers? And we're doing a little bit of both in both these sort of channels for different reasons. Uh, and so the idea is that what, what plays to the strengths of people with pre-existing conditions can be applied to larger population sets as well. So it's essentially using large-scale machine learning on the back end. Well, we're going to follow this with interest. Um, yeah. From Qantas, Shahid Azim, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>